I just asked like, so how can we still be a part of you guys? And he said, well, your way of thinking needs to leave. Mm -hmm. The way you think needs to go. And at the moment, I just knew I can't be Amish. Because mm -hmm. Jesus came and he renewed my mind. Mm -hmm. Even if I would have committed myself to staying Amish, I would still always be different. I would still always be thinking differently because that's what Jesus gave me. He renewed my mind. Yes. I couldn't undo it. This is Tiny Notes from Home, a place of inspiration and encouragement for your family as you journey with Jesus. From the home of a God-loving, Christ-honoring family like yours, here's today's Tiny Note. All right, so we are here in the home of Benuel and Mem Blank. Benuel and Mem come from an Amish background, and regardless of what cultural background they came from, I'm sure their story will apply to your life as well, because we all come from different cultures, and we all come from different religious backgrounds. And through this all, we want to glorify God. We don't want to elevate their family, but just use them as an example, one of many dozens and hundreds of families from the Amish community that have turned their life to Jesus. And as a result, they've lost a lot. And it's been hard, but they've gained a lot as well. From what we know about you, y'all were uh, raised Old Order Amish. So can you explain, first of all, what that is and yeah. just what some of the distinctives would be there? Sure. I'm Ben Yon, my wife Mim, of course. Um, I guess some of the distinctives that makes Old Order Amish Old Order Amish is um, they are sort of the original Amish flavor, mm -hmm. even though uh, it's sort of interesting because even from the original like Anabaptists, where the Amish say that they come from, they are completely different, not even closely resemble, resemble what they originally come from. Okay. So that's sort of interesting, and yet they call themselves Old Order. I see. Which I guess is fine, but then the New Order, there's also a New Order, which they branch off of the Old Order and have some different flavors and things. But Old Order Amish, basically, you know, we have horse and buggy, um, Normally, we have no electricity and um, technology and all those types of things. And it's actually difficult for me to talk about those things because they have it. They have electricity. They have uh, they own their own, own work trucks and you know, all those things. And uh, yet they say we can't have those things. And so it's sort of a controversial topic. I'm not sure, sure how to make sense of it because it doesn't right. really make sense. Yeah, I would agree. I think sometimes people tend to idealize the Amish life. Uh -huh. And there are a lot of good things, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of admirable qualities yeah. and um, lifestyle attributes. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you, Mim, would appreciate about your Amish background? There's a lot of positive things. Um, one would be the art of gardening, um, preserving your own food, um, sewing, um, family, Mm -hmm. You're very family oriented. Yeah, and the values, the, the mm -hmm. modest dress, um, even your your way of courting, pure courtship. Um, yeah, they're definitely set apart from the world. Right. So I'm curious, how did you all begin to date or how did you meet one another? Um, we didn't know each other until we were 16 and that's when we both joined the same youth group. In the, we lived like three miles apart and didn't know each other until we went to the same youth group and he so in the Amish culture I would not take the horse and buggy to the to the supper and the singing like the the youth group so he was the closest guy so he would come and pick me up and some more girls and we would drive to the to the youth group. Is there much interacting during that? Oh my ride? god <laughs> yeah <laughs> there was there was it was wild <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was I right away saw that I'm gonna I'm able to be just totally myself with this guy. He's just <laughs> he just brings my brings myself out actually. And it didn't take long for me to realize that I really kind of like this guy, and I think he likes me too. <laughs> and people actually started teasing us, teasing us about each other, and that that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that. Right. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, when we were eight, both 18, we started courting and we got married at age 20. And it was a good courting relationship. Um, there was no spiritual depth. Mm. I desired okay. that. Did you desire that at that time? Not really. <laughs> I desired that, but 
we didn't know how to mm -hmm. talk spiritually. And, right. And we got married, and of course we had our own property. That was our dream. Built the barn. Oh, we were so busy. The first first years we were so busy. I remember desiring to not be this busy, and yet we were like, what else would we do? <laughs> That's the Amish way of life. Yeah. yeah. And we had our first child on our anniversary a year later. Life was just perfect. And then once our first child was a year old, we met up with somebody that asked us some questions about the Amish lifestyle, and it was... I shied away. Like mm. I was like, I'm not gonna be involved with this conversation. Mm. He was targeting Manuel and you know asking questions, and Manuel was like, he should answer the questions that he gives him. Mm. Um, and yet he didn't know how. The only thing was, I don't know, tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you do the things you do, and how? I mean, yeah. By the end of the conversation, we ourselves had questions. Like we want to know what we stand for. We want to mm -hmm. know why we do what we do. So um, after that conversation, we started reading the Bible more. And um, couldn't necessarily find our questions, mm -hmm. answers to our questions. Um, but we found other things mm. that we were like, oh, why is this not being applied to our life? Mm -hmm. This is Jesus' commandment. Mm -hmm. Like, why are we not seeing this or doing this? And so that gives us even more questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that just led to... Then what? Going to our parents yeah. with questions. Mm. And that was pretty early in your marriage, just within it a few was, years. Of yeah, it was marriage. two mm. years of marriage mm. yeah. when it began. She mentioned the pure courtship. Um, it's different in a lot of Amish settings. Mm -hmm. In our particular setting, it was more pure. Okay. But in a lot of Amish settings, it's not that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. It's pretty much the opposite. Mm. I see. So, um, just all depends where you find yourself on the map. Yes. And mm -hmm. you are in this community. And even in this community, you're in this area versus this area. Or you're in this youth group or versus youth group. this youth group. Youth group has a huge difference. Right. It just has so many dynamics. Sure. Mm. It's, yeah. So we some... were very blessed with the youth group we were yeah. part of. Okay. That's great. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So some of the, uh, the, the, the quaintness and the purity that people see and are drawn to and attracted to in the Amish and Anabaptist way of life, some of that's authentic and some of that's true. Sure. You mentioned, you know, just being connected to, to, to nature through gardening and the mm -hmm. agricultural seasons and mm -hmm. this kind of a slow, methodical way of life. Like mm -hmm. people in the modern busy world, they want that, sure. right? Right. Um, but at the same time, it's not... It's not all rosy and, and yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. You talk about the sort of the quaint, easy lifestyle. It's not quite that way. Right. In, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it's very busy. Uh, and myself, before conversion, was just after money. And that's what my life surround, was uh, surrounded with, mm -hmm. was this pursuit of wealth. And um, it just created a very busy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we would have thought we would never have time for homeschooling because we have all these other things. Oh, sure. Sure. But... Since the Lord got a hold of us, we have turned a different direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what you see us today is not what we were six years ago. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> He's a different man. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blessing. And so it was about six years ago that 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 y'all decided to, um, well, to pursue Jesus first and foremost. Yes. Yes. Um, and that you had to count the cost there. Yeah. Um, because uh, do you want to explain a little bit about what it costs someone to 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 follow Jesus sure. and uh, the implications for family and whatnot? Sure. It's sort of interesting because Jesus talked about you know building a tower. He doesn't sit down first to count the cost before building a tower. Right. It almost seems like we didn't do that. Hmm. We just wanted to be with Jesus and we wanted to walk with him. And it wasn't until after we. I, I just remember saying to my wife, uh, this was a while after, and uh, we're just seeing like, okay, the, uh, how do people say, the one mile road has two miles of ditches. Mm -hmm. And as we're 
walking with Jesus, He's bringing conviction to us. And we rem I remember praying, just asking the Lord to give us conviction. We wanted to be led by God. We wanted to know how to walk. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has been teaching us. And um, I just remember saying to her one time, I said, this way is way more small and narrow than I thought it was mm -hmm. when I entered. Oh, wow. And so, um, you know, coming from Amish, it may seem small and narrow, but it's, I'm not sure how to word it, that it's, that I can put an explanation on it. Um, but I'm just seeing now when, when we disciple people, I don't leave out the, the cost. That's a big part of following Jesus. Yes. And, and specifically in an Amish context, what, what does that mean for you? Well, it was rejection from our family okay. in the beginning. If you, of, start, if you start asking questions, your mark does kind of weird. Un like unstable. if you're asking um, spiritual questions, for sure. We're talking spiritually about salvation yeah. and Jesus. Right. And talking about what you read in the Bible. It right. just, you're just looked at as whatever. Hmm. That seems strange for a Christian sect, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... Uh, like you, you were saying earlier that, that um, as you started reading the Bible, you had to hide that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. No. And even, what's, what's the mindset behind that? Are you able to explain that at all? Well, it's this big fear that people are going to leave the Amish. Okay. So it's, they, all about, it's all about just it's being all Amish. About not, it's all about being Amish. Yeah. And even like, um, you know, at church, after I was born again, I just had this life within me that I wanted to it just seemed like I was missing out on this life of Christ. And I thought all the other men in my church would understand. Mm. And uh, I, I got born again, and I wanted to talk about it. And this one day I was talking with the pastor of our church, and he, uh, there was more men around us, and I started talking spiritually about the scriptures, and all of a sudden I just felt this awkwardness. These men around me were just like turning the other way, finding another conversation to join, mm. and... All of a sudden, it was just me and the pastor by ourselves. And then later, I went out to go get my horse to leave. He came out after me and said, Ben, you be careful about what the things you're talking about. Hmm. I was just talking about the scripture. Right. And I had this hunger and thirst to, to talk about scripture and to talk about God. Mm -hmm. And um, it was more conversations where I would you know, talk about Jesus, what Jesus did in uh, books that I read in this man's life or this man's life, you know, and... It was just this awkward silence mm. after I had you know, shared the story. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what's wrong? Yeah. Like, yeah, what's going on? So you were faced with the decision at that point. Well, it was actually, to leave. it was actually, we had no intentions of leaving. I liked driving a horse and buggy. I liked uh, the Amish lifestyle. I liked the community. I loved my neighbors and my, the people I went to church with. I loved them. And uh, we had no intentions of leaving. But when it really came to a head was when uh, there was a lot of suspicion about us because of what we're saying and talking and acting. And then there's a rumor that went out about us amongst our people. And it was two weeks. And it was right over uh, the wedding season, which is usually in the fall. And there's lots of weddings going on. Mm -hmm. And people meet people. Everybody meets everybody. And so this rumor just spread like wildfire where the whole community knew that we're leaving the Amish mm. for two weeks until we knew anything about it. Oh. We didn't know we're leaving. We oh didn't my. know we're leaving. Oh, wow. <clears throat> but everybody else knew, thought we were going. Okay. And then our parents wanted to come visit us. My parents wanted to come or her parents wanted to come. And, but deep in my heart, I knew that, um, I just remember thinking, maybe they're right. Hmm. Maybe I'm leaving the Amish. It wasn't my intentions. It wasn't my desire. But it's just like, I, it's when I opened the door actually to maybe I need to leave well, the Amish. We knew, we or, knew we're not going to stop thinking or pursuing the, the things we were pursuing. Yeah. Pursuing truth. It was a sad realization that we can't, we can't ask our parents questions. We can't, like, we can't connect hmm. spiritually. It was, it was very shocking actually. Um, yeah, we were very innocent. Hmm. And then I wanted to go. I wanted to go see um, our the deacon of our church. I just wanted to talk with him, 
they had asked us to come to the church and usually before they excommunicate you they give you the opportunity to um, defend your case right and um, I went to see him before and I was just saying you know what's expected of us and just sort of wanting to know what happens when we come to church and they get us to sit up in front of everybody and share what's going on and either you repent and become Amish again or you just get excommunicated and then you can do your do your thing and so um, one question that I remember asking him actually on the way down I went with my horse on the way down I was driving down the road and I just felt like Lord why am I doing this why am I why am I going I just didn't quite understand why my feelings why am I in this place and at the moment I got a vision of me walking towards the cross and Jesus was crucified and he had just died his head was slumped over to the side mm. and yeah I just knew that's why I'm going yeah and uh, so one question that I asked him is um, what happens if we I said how can we still be Amish and you know be in a healthy relationship with you guys and maybe still be Amish and you know just be at peace with the things that we're pursuing. This was after we were rebaptized, after we committed our life to the Lord, we were baptized, and we were also having communion with other believers. And this was the thing that they were bringing up to bring against us. <clears throat> and so I was, I just asked, like, um, so how can we still be a part of you guys? And he said, well, your way of thinking needs to leave. Mm-hmm. The way you think needs to go. And at the moment, I just knew I can't be Amish. Because hmm. mm-hmm. Jesus came and he renewed my mind. Yeah. He gave me a new way of thinking. Yeah. And there was no way that I could go back to my old way of thinking. So during this time, were you, would you say you were on the same page? Were you seeing things the same way? Pretty much. It was... So we had somebody coming every two weeks, almost every two weeks, to disciple us. We really had a hunger and thirst for understanding more of the scripture or that understanding it better. Been, who had been Amish before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We had been praying for somebody to to disciple us. Mm-hmm. And they just dropped into our life. We were like, took it by faith that mm-hmm. this is from God. So after they left, usually, it was a lot to process and... Ben, you'll usually process it in about a few days, and then it took me about two more weeks to catch up. <laughs> and then we, by then we were ready for the next one. So, yeah, I usually tell people I, I was about two weeks behind until around the time when, I guess when we got rebaptized. then, that was, like, that was final. We're, we're together, mm-hmm. and we're united, and we're going forth together. So it was about a two-year journey from when, we, when our journey began to when we actually stepped out. Mm-hmm. And what was the hardest part in that process for you? Um, definitely the hardest was knowing how to relate with our parents. The relationships. Yeah. 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 Very strained. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some harsh words and um, trying to restrain your tongue and yet trying to help them see mm-hmm. what we're saying and yeah. yeah it took a lot of wisdom mm-hmm. i'm sure it did yeah i was wondering too because of because leaving the amish is there's a lot of weight that comes with that um so what when you left did you struggle feeling condemnation and what was that journey like for you yeah um so being raised amish you know, everybody has a conscience, and you're supposed to listen to your conscience. And be, having your conscience trained in a, in a certain way is hard to retrain that. And um, becoming born again, all of a sudden you, you're seeing things through new eyes. And there was a, there was a struggle with um, knowing you were taught opposite. Mm. And knowing your parents are going to continue mm-hmm. thinking that, and yeah, that was definitely something we dealt with. But at the same time, God always came through with truth, mm-hmm. and we knew who we're going to believe. 
So you were able to see, you were able to see through that and yeah. cling to his truth. Yeah. That's good. For sure, eventually, maybe some things were like very, mm. very gray for a time, but eventually they, it became very clear. Mm -hmm. And I think the key was probably having people walking with mm -hmm. you through that. Yeah. So important. Yeah. And scripture, just going through scripture and studying this specific topic, you know, what, what is God's heart in this and realizing that it is different than what, what I, how I thought. Mm -hmm. But I am over and over and over thankful that God got a hold of us then because mm -hmm. our marriage was totally surface level. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It, it didn't go any deeper. It was just, yeah, constant kind of friction. Like mm -hmm. he wanted to stay at home on the weekends because he was gone all week and I wanted to go away yeah. because I was at home during the week. Yeah. And yeah, it was just, mm -hmm. we had some moments of, some conflicts. One thing that happened with, uh, that we noticed uh, as we're going to our families and we're thinking like, why did they just talk about weather and work and people mm -hmm. all the time? It got so frustrating for us. Mm -hmm. And we were going, wanting to get something from them spiritually. Mm. We were very hungry. We were very hungry and we got so frustrated that we're never getting anything from them. Mm -hmm. It's just all carnal things. And so... And we weren't necessarily getting it from a lot of other people. We weren't getting either. it anywhere, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but something that has been, that my eyes have been open to more recently is that we can actually now go to be with our families and enter into their conversations and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Because we have a church body where we get mm. so fulfilled spiritually. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we're not going to them uh, looking for something spiritual mm -hmm. and they don't have to give. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just we can go and we can go and bless them because we have our source. Well, mm -hmm. first of all, Jesus. Right. And secondly, we have a church body that is very rich in fellowship and yeah. blessing. So, yeah. So those questions that you were asking uh, came just from reading the Bible. And that's that's something that the in the Amish community that people don't read the Bible. Is right. that right? And they're afraid of the questions because uh, to a degree, if people ask those questions and come to the right conclusions, yeah, then they would no longer be Amish. Mm -hmm. That's right. On our wedding day, we got encouraged to read the Bible only on the weekend, only Sundays. Okay. And not read it during the week because it gets too ordinary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that sort of, I guess I just didn't really know. I just seemed like a good a good advice. Well, at the time, yeah, maybe, maybe it was good advice, but I'm like, I don't quite understand. Mm. I still didn't quite understand. It was too right. weird. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious, as you were coming out of the Amish, and as that door was closing, you know, your your whole world is opening up to new relationships and new understanding. Um, what was that transition like for you? coming out of a more structured system of this is what we, how we do things. This is kind of almost like law. Like no this questions is, asked. Mm -hmm. This is the way we do it to then learning how to walk in the spirit and, and be more led by the Lord mm -hmm. and not rely on those um, things that are in place for you. Yeah. Well, we really didn't have a choice, much of a choice. Like we got excommunicated and it's like, now what? Mm -hmm. Now what do we stand for? What are our convictions? We, I mean, we were forced to figure out what do we stand? What are our convictions? Before that, we didn't need to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we went to the Bible. We went to, we had strong people that were discipling us. And mm -hmm. we went to them with our questions, of course. Mm -hmm. And... What do you, how do you, how would you add to that question? Yeah, well, it's like I was telling you earlier how it felt like I'm falling out of an airplane mm -hmm. with my arms flinging wildly. And I probably felt more of that responsibility than my wife because I'm the head of the home. And it's just like, um, yeah, I, I was just trying to find anything, trying to, grab to, find a anything to grab a hold of. Yeah. And uh, until it came to my realization that it's it's Jesus who I need to hang on to. Yes. And and we did that ever since. Yeah. But uh, leaving the Amish without Jesus is 
generally not a good idea because it just is um it's pretty chaotic and you don't know there's what, a lot of voices out there a lot of voices out there a lot of voices and at that time we had four different couples and now actually four different denominational people i guess i could say now there's five actually uh, that had an influence in our lives at that time and we're speaking to our life and saying you know come this way one was jehovah's witness okay the other one was like uh the denomination church of christ mm -hmm. and I, I don't mean to bash any of these people sure but it's just like all of these voices were coming in and we were open we were very vulnerable when someone would talk about god we'd like to listen you know? right we're, we're also into god right mm -hmm. right and so but all of these voices really made us like search yeah mm -hmm. what are we about right mm -hmm. and each of these voices was saying we're the right way no we're mm -hmm. the right way right and there was four of them the amish was another one of them and right uh there was another one i can't remember the name of it or the apostolic guy who uh shared the gospel with us in the beginning sure so they're all like pulling the their direction right and we're caught in the middle saying we don't know which way to you go. You need spiritual discernment you need there. Spiritual discernment. Yeah. yeah, and that was a red flag to us. Was when they said we're we're the only group. Mm -hmm. We just right away that was a red flag because that's right. where we came from. Right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're very skeptical of those things. But all in all, like we're just praying. I remember praying that, saying, "Lord, we need someone to disciple us. We have all these questions. We've been reading the scriptures now, reading in English. We're understanding the words, but." We have all these questions because previously the little Bible reading that we did was either German, we didn't understand it, or it was through Amish lenses. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a new way of reading it, but we still didn't quite understand it. Right. And so I remember praying that the Lord would send somebody to us to disciple us. Mm -hmm. And that we would know who that is when that happens. Yes. And then that's when this couple who's now ex-Amish, or was ex-Amish, still is, uh, they now live in New York. but. They just, they just uh, took responsibility to teach us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they came and they would eat with us and they would share the word with us and they would pray for our son. Our son wasn't doing well at that time. They would mm -hmm. pray for him, and uh, we felt so loved. Mm -hmm. We just felt so accepted. Understood. Understood. All of the questions. There was no questions off limits. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, shortly after that, uh, the ministers came to see us and, hey, what's this? We're hearing about you guys here having communion with other believers and you're have been rebaptized and and uh yeah we said that's true well it didn't take long so they're like well you know what happens if you keep going down this way you're gonna be as communicated and and at the time i just thought like well they also said that um if you would just submit yourselves to our authority you could have it so nice right and at the time i thought like well I don't really want it nice. Like <laughs> I just, I just want Jesus. Right. Whatever that means. Yeah. I've heard other, formerly Amish people who have come out, you know, and how they've they've said that they have struggled to know, am I really saved? You know, that assurance of salvation. Was that something that you all walked through as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was something our the people we were who were discipling us really talked to us about, mm -hmm. and really, yeah brought scriptures out and gave us the truth. Yeah, could you share more what those truths were that you you were able to cling to? Yeah, well, uh, I think it's in 1 John 5 uh, is the one that really, like, that I grabbed the hold of. And uh, that's actually the one I talked to my minister about. I said, mm. what do you think about this scripture? And, uh, like, I, I can't say that we really doubted our salvation, but it was more rather coming to the grips of, yes, we can know. This mm -hmm. is something that God desires to give us, and we know that we have received it. Mm -hmm. And so um, I can't say that we really felt any condemnation through it or like there wasn't, like we didn't believe it, but it was overcoming, rather overcoming that mindset. It was a thought pattern. It was a thought pattern, rather. Yeah. So we, we had, were taught that you do the best you can and God will cover the rest hmm. yeah. and just hope that God's grace mm -hmm. will cover the rest, you know, hmm. will reach you and coming to the realization that it's nothing we do. It is all Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Was just, to, it totally made sense then that we know we're saved. Before when we said, 
that we know we're saved, it was like, oh, you think you're good enough. Right. Oh, right. It was so it was a pride, pride. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Now right. it's like, if I say I'm not saved, I'm actually proud. I mean, I'm actually denying Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And what he did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so exactly like that. Like growing up Amish, they have this mentality where you work for your salvation. And so now when I say uh, I'm saved, they'll look at me and say, Oh, you think you worked good enough to True. earn your salvation? Mm -hmm. See, you're proud. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's nothing that I did other than accept what Jesus mm -hmm. wants to give me. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that whole mindset had to change. And like I said, there's no really condemnation. It was just we had to think differently about mm -hmm. salvation and knowing that you're saved. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, can you just touch on like what, what is the Amish prayer life versus what, uh, what is your prayer life like now? How's... Yeah. Uh, that's actually a subject that I, I really like to share because I think it, it uh, can apply for maybe anyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, specifically in the Amish, we have this little black prayer book and it's all in German. And every evening and sometimes in the morning we do it too. We just, we pick a prayer in this book. It was usually the same one every time. And so I would just read it in German. I didn't understand what it said. Mm. I just read it. And so we would kneel by the sofa and I would just read. And evenings after a hard day of work, I'm tired. And I would sometimes fall asleep while I'm reading. And then I would just you know, wake up and pick a spot and keep reading. She never <laughs> knew the difference. <laughs> just, we just did that. And... Uh, <clears throat> I came to a place where I desired to talk with God. I told her, this is not working. I don't know what I'm reading. And so we said, well, let's get a English translation of the prayer book. Mm. And so we did that. We found an English one. I'm not even sure where we got it, but we found an English translation of it and it was powerful. I just mm. didn't know that we're praying these powerful prayers. Oh, wow. <laughs> Until about um, a month into it, it became a repetitionist prayer again, right. where we just, we're back in the same rut, right? right? And so uh, I just again said, this is not working. I need something else. I want to talk to God. I want to relate with my father. Mm -hmm. If he's my father, I want, to, I want to talk with him. And so we decided, well, we're going to do an audible prayer. And so we just put the book away. I went to pray and it was so awkward. It was completely awkward. Oh, wow. I didn't know how to pray. It scared me because I realized that I don't know how to pray. Hmm. I don't know how to talk to God. And it bothered me. And so <clears throat> in this desire, uh, we met with my cousin who was also on a journey. They were Amish at the time. And we went to see them one evening. And at that time we were still Amish, planning to be Amish. And we went to see them. And uh, we were hoping to connect with them and maybe help them to stay Amish and be spiritual right. and, and be Amish. Well, by the end of the evening, uh, my cousin said something to me about, well, let's pray before you leave. And we said, sure. And so he said, I'll lead in prayer and then you can follow if you want to. I said, I don't want to. He said, oh, that's not a problem. I'll, I'll pray and then my wife will follow and close in prayer. <laughs> okay, and that's what we did. We came home that evening from my cousin's house. I was so excited. I said to my wife, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. I just want to talk to God. Right. <laughs> and so that was the beginning of my prayer life mm -hmm. uh, and a real uh, talking, communicating with God type of thing. Amen. And so that was a, a huge step in our journey. And did you see um, fruit from that? What, what, what flowed oh, out absolutely. of that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, well, I guess that goes into the other thing uh, that I desire to talk about is is how we came to desiring baptism. And uh, so just being able to pray and ask the Lord. And sometimes we would just, sometimes we would say to each other, I wish Jesus, I wish Jesus were here and he would just tell us, do we need to be Amish or, or not? Mm -hmm. Like, just give us a yes or no. And that's not how God answered us. Maybe he does sometimes, but he did it us. Um, not with a yes or a no. Not with a yes mm -hmm. or a no in these situations. It, was just... it, it seems like what God has been 
teaching us is is to take steps of faith. Mm. It's the stepping stones. And sometimes we hardly see the next step, but we say, this is good. This is from God. We're going to take the next step. And then we take the next step. And in all this process, we're still saying, if this were a little bit more black and white, not so gray area, we could see easier. But every time God just gave us enough a light to take a step of faith, and then we would take a step of faith. And now, when we look back in our journey, it's so black and white. Yeah, it's all it's clear. It's so clear. <clears throat> and so, um, that's sort of how the prayer life maybe interacts with our walk, mm -hmm. is just helping us to know what it means taking a step of faith. So I have, don't have time to go into all these details uh, of answered prayers, and even God speaking to me to pray for my wife. I'm at work, and I'm working, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, pray for your wife. And lo and behold, I came home that evening and my wife, her mom came and one of her aunts came to persuade her to say Amish. Mm. And we discovered that it was at that moment that the mm. Holy Spirit spoke to me and wow. said, pray for your wife. Wow. Wow. And so like things like that, God just worked and was confirming our steps, mm. step by step. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which leads to you know, a desire for baptism. I was wrestling with this. Uh, initially, when this couple started discipling us, they challenged us to make that commitment with Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, but I had this desire because I knew when I got baptized in the Amish church, it was just nothing ever changed in my life. It was just because I was old enough and everybody else that was my age was doing it. All my friends were doing it. And so I did too. And because, we wanted to start courting. Yeah, we wanted to start courting. our youth group that I see. we're supposed to be baptized before we start courting. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I want to have a girlfriend. I need to be baptized. So, um, no. so you do you do almost you do, do almost anything, right? Exactly. <laughs> all it takes is baptism. That's yeah. Why. And so um, the day of the baptism, we got baptized in a little birthing pool on our back deck. It was cold. It was day before Christmas, after Christmas, after Christmas. day after Christmas. <clears throat> it was cold and windy, and so um, we filled up a little pool and. Uh, we were sitting in the living room, right in this living room, and there's this wrestling going on in my heart where I just like, it, it feels like this. You know how you play the arm wrestling game? Uh -huh. You got two games going like this? And it was just this intense wrestling. Somehow the Lord just revealed to me that baptism is going to cost me my Amish membership. Mm. At that time, I thought I might not always be Amish, but I wanted to be. And in fact, I think Amish was more of an idol to me that the Lord had to strip away from me. And so I believe this, is the process, this was the process in this wrestling. God was trying to take away that idol and I was trying to hang on to it. Mm. <clears throat> and um, to the point where I said, I'm just gonna give it up. I'm not gonna get baptized today. But immediately there was this big regret that came over my heart and I knew that I have to proceed. And so I decided to proceed. I just sort of squashed, squandered my feelings hmm. and I proceeded with it anyway. And that's what happened then. They used that against us to excommunicate us. I see. But nevertheless, after the baptism, I was sitting on my recliner and the Holy Spirit just came over me hmm. and washed me. And I knew at that time it didn't matter. For me at that time, it just didn't matter if I'm Amish or not Amish. It, I didn't care what I was. I just wanted to be in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, Mim, would you have something you could share as just encouragement to, you know, there's a lot of people out there, maybe husband and wife aren't fully on the same page. Maybe the husband is pursuing a path and the wife says, I just don't know, is this really, you know, is this really of God? So, you know, I've heard you kind of echo some of that a little bit. What would you have as an encouragement to share? Yeah, um, my journey was very much like my husband was, yeah, pursuing God, pursuing something. And sometimes I was like, okay, can I trust him? Or um, is he on the right path or not? Is he going weird? But <laughs> um, the fruits that I saw coming out of his life just proved that something is happening in his heart, mm. deep in his heart. He was turning into a, a complete different man, mm. but a man that I 
loved. Mm -hmm. I loved him before too, but um, there was things coming out that I was ready to embrace. Mm -hmm. And that just... And you were able to trust that because you saw yeah. the good fruit in his life. I saw fruits of the Spirit coming out. Mm -hmm. And that, that gave me assurance of submitting to his leading and mm -hmm. being okay with that. So, yeah, I would say just look for the fruits. Um, if the Holy Spirit is at work, the fruits of the Spirit will come out. And Benuel, earlier you mentioned taking these baby steps of faith mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. trusting the Lord along the way. Um, you clearly have led your wife uh, mm -hmm. gently in that way, and uh, I, I know your marriage has grown and flourished as a result mm -hmm. of the work of the Spirit in your life. So what, uh, what are the next steps the Lord has placed before you? What's your vision for your family and, and ministry as you look to, to the near future? Yes, very good question. This new desire has been birthing in both of us uh, for city ministry. Uh, we currently city, city ministry. City ministry, okay, yeah. yeah. We currently live in the country. We have animals and we like all those things, but we want to be where people are. We want to be where God is working uh, and where people are. And... Uh, we have that here to a certain degree, but as far as like a vision for our future, it almost seems more like um, God is putting a burden on our hearts to live in the city and be working amongst uh, people who are not as maybe not as fortunate as we have been mm -hmm. in our past, or you know, growing up with some of the values that we have grown up with, and we're just wanting to share this life in Christ with other people. And where you, where do you take the light? That's what we usually say. Where do you take the light? Right. To the darkness. Right. Yeah. So as we close, thank you so much for having us into your home. What would be your final encouragement um, or final closing thought mm -hmm. that you could share uh, with our viewers that you can uh, yeah. bless them with? Sure. Um, my closing thought is that Jesus is the solution uh, always and we have spent time in Greece, and in Greece there was like four or five different cultures that we interacted with. And every one of those people who committed their lives to the Lord uh, had the same results as what we have mm. when we committed our lives to the Lord. And so this is not just, Jesus is not just for Amish people. He's not just for uh, the millionaire or the guy on the street. He's for, yes, everyone right. and all of the above. Right, yeah. right. Uh, ultimately, it's God coming and redeeming mankind, mm -hmm. and all all He needs is our submission to yes. Him. The gospel is the same to, in all in all mm -hmm. cultures. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, praise the Lord that that uh, the light of Christ has uh, been birthed in you, and I look forward to what the Lord will continue to do as you yeah. s surrender yourself to Him.